Hey everybody, I'm going to show you a little idea I came up with. I think it's a halfway decent one. You get hardwood floors, or you know someone who had hardwood floors, and they got some scraps left over. This is, you know, obviously beautiful hardwood. Here's a nice little trick you can do with it. You can make a picture frame out of it. You can paint it, have your kids paint it, you can stain it. I used uh, biscuits on the corners and all I did was shave off one side of the groove and then use the groove to put the glass in or you could leave it intact or cut it deeper whatever floats your boat but I was just trying to go for a quick easy project here if you can see here, I just added a piece of plexiglass that I had laying around. And then I made a back. This is an easy one. You just brad nail it, screw it. If you wanted to make it smaller and have it fit into the groove with the glass, you could put a swivel lock on the back so you can change the picture. I never intend on changing the picture, though. This one's actually using the tongue as the stop for the glass. You can see the groove is still around the outside. But you can flip it around and cut half the groove off, cut the tongue off as well, run a router around it. I mean, the possibilities are pretty much endless. So I've got this piece of glass I've had laying around. I'm just gonna make the frame the same size as the piece of glass. And then you could always put a photo or a painting in it and put a mat behind it to give it a nice edge to fill the gap around the perimeter for you. You can see here the glass is 21 and 3 quarters. Oh boy. by 17 and 3 quarters. So I'll cut it so that the groove meets that measurement. The easiest way to do it is to cut one side. Now you can see the groove is in a little bit from the inner tip. So what I'll do is I'll just cut close to my measurement, leaving it a bit long, and I'll lay my tape measure right in that groove and I'll just keep shaving off a little bit more, a little bit more, until I'm exactly where I want to be. Okay, so I just put it together as a dry run to make sure it fits. I had to take a few skims off. And then once you got the top perfect, you can use that to scribe the bottom. Once you have the left side or the right side correct, you can use that to match up the other side. And now I will be using the biscuit cutter to join the corners, and some carpenter glue, and some clamps. Actually, scratch that. I think I might... Well, I don't know if I want to run a router on this, or sand it. Maybe just cut it flat. I don't know. I want to go for a beachy... Uh, I want it to look kind of nautical when it's done. Yeah, let me think about it. Okay, I've made a bunch of cuts with the saw and the bag is filling up down at the bottom and working its way up instead of getting clogged up here and only filling in the front like it was doing. So I'd say that my repair is a success. All right, so I just ran everything through my table saw, and I cut that bead off the back. Now, I don't know if I want to do maybe a 45 on the outer edge or a 45 on the inner edge. Uh, round it over with a router bit, sand it, and leave it kind of square and rough looking. I don't want it to look like I'm being lazy, but I also don't want to ruin the looks of things.
by overthinking it. Okay, so I spoke a little early and at a turn a moment ago. Um, I just took out the biscuit cutter and I cut out the biscuit pockets on both halves of each corner. Uh, I assembled it, dry fit it, made a mark that I lined the line on the biscuit cutter deck up with. And I put a number in at least one corner. That way if I line up the one and the one, well, everything else has just kind of got to line up. Unless you mix up the two sides. The top and bottom obviously can't get mixed up. The two sides can't mix up because there's the number there. Okay, so I dry fit the pieces. I made a mark across roughly the center of each corner. I put a number in one corner. Now with that number on the top and the side, you can't mix up one side with the other side. You can't mix up the bottom and the top. So here you can see the pocket for the biscuit. And uh, I spoke out of turn earlier. We're not ready to glue it yet. Obviously, I think we should sand it. If you're going to route it, do whatever you want to do to the sides first rather than trying to do it once it's assembled. So if you're going to do any projects like this, uh, do yourself a favor. Get yourself four corner clamps. They come in different shapes and styles. Uh, these are the smallest ones I can use that will fit this flooring into them. They do come bigger and more powerful for mashing things together, conforming them to your will. But these should do the trick for this project. Another favor you can do yourself is uh, get them on and snug, but not tight. Uh, that way, it, see, I just have it loose, but almost tight. So when I do have it glued up and it's a gluey, gooey mess, I won't be trying to turn this a million times and flapping this around, fighting it. Uh, I'll get the biscuit in there. Right now, it's just a dry fit. I'll glue it. I'll clamp one corner at a time. I'll, I'll work the clamp. I'll work the material. Make sure it's looks good. Make sure it's flush and level. Um, you may have to uh, put little blocks of wood in to help finagle it to how you want it. Sometimes it helps to run the wood past this corner point a little bit so that when you tighten these, it mashes the corner together. You'll you'll get it once you mess with them for a little while. But uh, I definitely recommend you practice before you put the biscuits and the glue in so that you're not fighting that tremendous mess as you're trying to learn how to manipulate the clamps. A couple more pointers is you want to leave room for expansion and contraction. So try to leave the the grooves with a little bit, you know, maybe an eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch of space. And if you make a mistake, which I'm concerned I may have, I might be a little too tight here, uh, you can dado out this groove and make it deeper or a little wider to compensate. No one will ever know the difference. So I'm just going to uh, butter my biscuit. For the side that I can't get at. A little bit along the edge. Get that in there. I don't know how long it takes them to start to swell up from moisture, but uh, I don't like to take any chances that it might begin to swell and I won't be able to get it into the slot. So I try to act fast. Three out of four corners came out perfect, but with the glass in the frame, the clamps can't slide up as deep as they would like to for the wood to bottom out in the clamp. So I added these clamps with just a little bit of pressure to help finesse this corner into submission. Now I'm going to get out the uh, brad nailer and I'm just going to put a few tacks through the corners. Now obviously this would have been easier if I had cut this back off and maybe thin down the front so that the glass could just drop in from the back when the frame was done. And then the picture, and then the backing, and then some brads, uh, some push brads or the 
push pins that you use to hold in glass sashes or swivel hooks, perhaps. Could hold everything in. But uh, I like to challenge myself. You don't have to. Just for the record. All right, it's around four o'clock. I don't recall what time it was when I glued this together, but uh, I'm gonna bring it in the house because my workshop is not heated and I'm heating it right now, but overnight it's gonna get cold out here. So I'm gonna bring this in the house to sit for 24 hours. And then tomorrow I'll uh, sand it, tape off the glass and give it a paint job and uh, make a back for it and it'll be done. Okay, so the glue's had 24 hours to cure. Um, I took the bar clamps off. I'm gonna leave these corner clamps on while I sand these joints to make them perfect because that stress, I don't wanna risk cracking the glue. It's probably fine, but better safe than sorry. And uh, I'm just gonna give this a quick sanding, take the clamps off, and then uh, I think I got an idea on how I wanna paint this. Okay, I've got this sanded nice. Uh, I did leave it a little chunky in some places because I do want this to have a rough, uh, almost like a beech wood look to it. We're going for a slightly nautical theme here. By the way, what I'm showing you here, very, very similar to if you wanted to make uh, glass doors, cabinet doors for a, a curio, a, a china cabinet. <clears throat> some people have glass doors on their kitchen cabinets. I don't get that. You got to stack all your plates and cups neatly so guests can see them and they look good. That doesn't make sense to me. But to each their own. Uh, at any rate, if you were making cabinet doors, you would do something very, very similar. You would probably do tongue and groove or mortise and tenon joints on the corners. Um, but maybe you could do biscuits and glue. I don't know. Uh, you can see I threw a couple brads through the biscuit. I used ones that were too short to make it out the front. And of course I went in from this corner that way, that corner this way, but I stayed away from potentially hitting the glass and shattering it. Very important. Don't get too close to the glass. Um, again, let me reiterate that uh, you don't have to have the glass in a groove. You could have this uh, routed or dadoed out. Put the glass in put a piece of wood over this that goes over the edge of the glass and holds it in let it float for expansion and contraction um, you can use hardware to hold the glass in uh, i got to see if i can find you what i'm talking about to show you a good example but really just a little piece of metal with a screw that sticks halfway out onto the glass uh, and again, make sure that you don't make sure the glass is floating in the opening so it doesn't expand and contract and blow apart the frame. Very important. So I am going to tape this off with newspaper and tape, both sides of the glass, because I'm a dummy and the glass is in early and I have to make sure I don't get paint on it. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to try to do to make the frame look nautical. So I laid the newspaper in the frame. It's almost a perfect fit, but we need to leave room for tape. So there was this nice convenient line at the top of the box. I cut it with the razor knife. And now I'm just gonna space this out away from all three sides. I'll do the same thing to another sheet and put it down here. And then I'll just tape around the perimeter and uh, it'll be ready for paint. Okay, I got the tape up close to the edge. Uh, I made a mistake in one spot, so I put another strip over it to get closer to the edge. And I taped the middle, the seam. If I got paint on the glass, I could obviously scrape it off with a scraper, but I think it's easier to just do a good job taping it off and try not to make extra work for myself. I don't plan on doing a killer paint job on the back of the frame but I did tape the back of the glass as well so that I don't get paint back here so my idea is I want to spray the frame with gray paint 
this I will allow to dry, at which time I will paint over it with white paint. Once that dries, I am going to take some of the gray, spray it into like a bottle cap or something. Uh, then I will take a paintbrush, dab it in the paint, and I will flick the bristles with my thumb to throw dabs of gray paint over the top of the white paint. When that's all dry, I'm going to take some sandpaper and I am going to distress it and give it kind of a worn, like it's been sitting on the beach getting chewed up by the sand and the tide for a number of years. It's like it's built out of dock wood almost. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys, I am using the blowgun on the air hose. Just making sure there's no, uh, no sawdust under where I'm about to paint. So make sure you clean your work thoroughly. Um, I can't recommend one brand over another. Uh, I'm using Krylon just because it was the color closest to the color that I was looking for and it was available. They are not a sponsor yet. And uh, here we go. So obviously I've been shaking this up off camera so I don't bore your brains out. And I'm gonna try to get into the nooks and crannies first. So now I've got it face down, I'm going to try to get just around the edge of the back. This is surprisingly tricky to do looking through a camera and using one hand. Okay, quick coat. Sorry guys, the heat of my workshop made a moth come out of hibernation and he proceeded to fly into my face. So here we go again. All right, I know that was fast and sloppy. It'll be a little bit nicer on the other side where you can actually see it. So I put on one glove so that if I touch any paint, I'm not getting it on my hands. But I think we'll be okay. And now uh, I'll paint the front in a similar manner, but with the can held further back in a more controlled spray without trying to work the camera at the same time. Uh, I've decided to lay it down on four blocks of wood on the glass. And the reason I did so was so that I can spin it. I've already done the three sides I could, and now I've spun the side I couldn't get to so that it is accessible. Always remember, guys, when you're done with your paint, hold it upside down and spray it until just air comes out. That cleans out the nozzle, so hopefully the can will still work the next time you go to use it. You notice I'll say hopefully. I, uh... I wouldn't hold my breath. At any rate, so I did a pretty good, pretty even coat. Uh, you can see it's still got some wood showing through, and that's fine. Uh, a, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to paint over the top of it with the white paint. The only reason this is on here is so that when I distress it, hopefully some gray paint will show, and then maybe some wood will show, depending on how far I take it. Um... So I did try to get nice coverage. 
it's more important that you don't have runs and drips. I tried not to pool it, puddle it, because that will show up through the other layers of paint and that looks terrible. So that's your important thing. Put it on thin. It's better to do a bunch of thin coats than get one thick coat that has drips and runs in it. Uh, there's a little wood showing through. There's a knot showing through, but I think I like that. Uh, I love the way that the grain shows through the wood. So the paint looks more like a stain or a whitewash. And um, hopefully it'll show through the white paint as well. And I think this is going to look really fantastic when it's done. I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then tomorrow I will start up the heaters and get it warm enough in here. Uh, as the heaters shut off, the heat will dissipate. It will get cold out here. But this is spray paint on wood. It's going to dry pretty quick. The temperature should stay well above freezing for a few hours. Give the paint a chance to dry. And then uh, tomorrow we'll start fresh. Uh, these are the pieces of hardware I was talking about. These are eighth inch canvas offset clamps. And let me just put this down a second so I can tear this open and show you what they do. So here's another frame I made. This one just has a groove in it. The glass can come out through the back. And if this were to be a cabinet door, I could put these clips down with the eighth inch down pushing against the glass, tight up against the edge of the wood so it doesn't twist. Put a screw in here. Make sure the screw is perpendicular, straight up and down. If it's leaning, the clamp isn't going to clamp. And you put that down and it would hold the glass in place for you which would also make it easier to remove the glass for cleaning, maintenance, replace it if it ever got broken, things like that. Uh, if the glass ever breaks in this frame, I'm just going to have to smash it all out and then take my router and route out the back so that a new piece of glass can be slid in. Uh, not the end of the world, but obviously it would be easier to do it this way okay so that's the back uh, I got a feeling it's gonna take two coats on the front but we'll see the back is rougher has these grooves thick rain hasn't been sanded really soaking that paint up and I kind of dig the way it looks but that's the back we'll flip it over and see what happens with the front Okay, so it's the next day. We are dry. We are grainy and rough. I love it. Uh, my tape wasn't doing so well in this corner. I tried to cut it with the knife and I ripped it out by accident. So I put a new piece in so I don't paint that glass in that corner. But uh, now I'm going to go over this with the white paint, starting with the backside. Uh, the paper must have ripped when I was spinning it around on the blocks of wood on the other side, so I'm just going to patch that up with a little piece of tape. Uh, oh boy, folks. I am so happy with the way this is turning out. I don't know if I even want to distress it or do the speckles. It looks so good. I don't know if the camera's doing it any justice, but... The gray in the wood grain, and then the white, it just, I think it looks really fantastic. Now I have a hard decision to make whether I want to distress it and do the speckling trick. Alright, so while you guys were gone, I uh, did spray some gray paint into a bottle cap. Uh, dabbed this little brush for uh, spreading paste for when you're soldering into the gray paint flicked it onto the frame and I kind of liked the way it looked but some of the drops were a little oversized and were driving me crazy so I went over it again with a fine mist from the white paint I kind of dig it in some places and not in others I think I'm going to give this a try I'm going to call it done and if I don't like it 
I'll give it another coat of white paint. Because I like the way that looked. It just seemed like I was cheating, like I was getting off too easy, you know? So, we'll see how this goes.